Good evening from Washington, D.C., and thank you for joining us for News from a Catholic Perspective. I'm Wyatt Goolsby, in for Lauren Ashburn. We must forgive the bishops. It's probably the last thing you would expect to hear from a victim of clergy sex abuse. But that's exactly what the man who claims Archbishop Theodore McCarrick abused him for nearly two decades tells me. I spoke one-on-one -on -one with James Grine in his first interview since revealing his identity to the public. He says the disgraced archbishop shattered his trust, but he also says it didn't destroy his faith. I didn't see him every day, but every day I saw him, he abused me. 60-year-old James Grine says it's difficult to relive the painful memories of abuse. After decades of silence, he's opening up about Theodore McCarrick, the former Archbishop of Washington, who he says molested him for 18 years. He's a sad, weak man who has lost his faith in Jesus Christ. James was born in New Jersey to a big Catholic family. He tells me McCarrick was a longtime family friend, a man he called his Uncle Teddy. He was part of the very fabric of my family. And so when he came to visit us, whether it was in New Jersey or in California, it was important that he was there because the priest is here, the holy man is here, and we all have awe towards him. James says his father told him to do whatever Uncle Teddy said, that he could trust then Father McCarrick. And so James says as a child, he opened himself up completely. I was able to sit across from him and talk to him and give him, show him my body, uh, body language and really get to the depth of what was going on because I trusted him more than I ever trust anybody. That trust was shattered in 1969 when he was 11 years old. That's when James says the abuse started. It happened at his family home in New Jersey when the two were alone. He was afraid to tell anyone, even his own brothers and sisters. What did you say to yourself in those times when you were alone? That I must hide what is happening to me. I cannot tell anybody and I have to protect myself from anybody else because if this man's doing it to me, how many others are going to do this to me if I open my mouth. And I cut myself off from God, from other human beings, and got lost. James stopped going to church as a teen and began drinking and eventually using drugs. For the next two decades, it got worse. When he was 33 years old, he tried to commit suicide by overdosing on gin and prescription painkillers. I went to uh, an emergency room. They, they said to me that uh, they had somebody for me to talk to. I was afraid, but I did. The person on the other end of the phone said, 10 years ago, I did the exact same thing you did tonight. And today, I live happy, joyous, and free. That was God been a lot of God moments. It was then in 1991 that James stopped drinking and doing drugs and started praying again. He stopped speaking to McCarrick and began a path to recovery. James hopes to lend his voice to other victims of abuse and addiction and let them know they're not alone. As for the now disgraced Archbishop, I pray for him every day so that he may feel the need to repent, to just tell the truth. James tells me he's disappointed the U.S. bishops won't be taking any action on clergy sex abuse for the moment. He says the bishops are not being held accountable. If you're the victim of clergy sex abuse, contact the National Abuse Hotline. It's 800-656-HOPE. It's run by an organization called RAIN.